what's up guys this is alex from x trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list hope everybody had a wonderful weekend we finally got a new microphone in the mail um so the audio quality is going to be so much better hopefully and uh hopefully the you know the overall quality of the videos will just pick up in general so let's go ahead and get into our first setup here we're looking at navita i really like this setup because it's got a downtrend line breakout on the weekly time frame so we got test one test number two the test three rejection um also made a base off the 1b200 ema which is also 140 support you can see now that it is breaking to the upside um one thing that there is in the way here you do have the uh, one week 50 ema um where you can see it, there's a rejection along with the downtrend line but um otherwise if we go to the daily time frame you got no supply in the way here except for all the way back up here which is that one week supply and you just saw that so this is the one week supply it comes from this area if we go to the daily time frame uh no daily supply until up around you know 185. do i think it's going to reach that high this week i highly doubt it this does give free space up to the supply which means this could just be like a nice little lift off area due to the breakout though and you know these candles being kind of big it could have you know a day or two of consolidation first maybe it would be wise to wait for a dip um it just depends our size not overbought yet MACD is positive, so that's otherwise um, for price targets. Basically, um, you know, you do have that one week supply, but 185, it's kind of far away though. I guess if we go to the one hour here, a little resistance right here at 171. Um, we probably need to see 171 get taken out, and then that would give you a clear shot um, up to the 184. So just keep an eye on that level, but otherwise, a uh, breakout looks good on the one week time frame. This could be a setup for swing traders. If y'all didn't tune in last week, amazing setups. Uh, we had three big tech names. We had um, Apple, Microsoft, and Google, all looking for calls to the upside, and um, all three of them did great. So hopefully this week uh, will be similar and we'll have some good setups again. I know there, there is some people who, you know, do use these ideas and, you know, they'll act on them. So hopefully they'll they all work out for everybody like last week. But yeah, this one looks really good for swing traders. Like if you wanted to do like calls like a little bit out, the only thing is um, if you did do 30 days out or 60 days out, on option contracts, the earnings is coming up February, Wednesday, the 22nd. Next, we'll go into DKNG. It says this is DraftKings online, um, online betting agency. Obviously, you can pay, play sports bets on this website and stuff like that. Um, I personally don't. I just stick to the stock market. You'll be waiting for confirmation on this one, obviously, because you do have uh, no confirmed breakout yet or anything. You got test one. You got test two, test number three. This would be the fourth test. Um, so on the cash open Tuesday, we're going to be either looking for selling directly off the trend line or we're going to be looking for a breakout. Um, so you're going to be waiting for confirmation on this. You're, you're not going to want to act on this right away uh, just because it's not cleared over the trend line. So you don't want to take calls instantly and you don't want to take puts instantly also because you don't have a confirmed rejection yet. So we want to see that. You can see the back D is crossed to the upside. So that could be good. Uh, RSI is not completely overbought yet. So that could be good. Only thing for bears, they do have this downtrend line in their favor. So we wanna see how that reacts first before doing anything. So this setup will be waiting for confirmation. Uh, don't act on this one right away. So you could be looking at calls or puts on this one, by the way. Uh, if it did wanna break out to the upside, we'd be looking at this resistance at 1547. Downside targets, if it did reject here, um, obviously the 50 EMA, which is at about you know, like $13 and 20 cents area. Um, and then back down to, you know, these lows. That's your trading range. You got 15, you know, down to $10. Or, you know, if you round it up to 1085, $11. So we'll have to see how that does. Wait for confirmation on this one. You know, a lot some of these setups are not gonna be as clean as last week. You know, Apple, we had a clear breakout last week. Um, Microsoft and Google had clear, you know, bounces off demand. So yeah, good confirmation there. This one's kind of similar to SQ last week, right? There was no breakout yet, but at the same time, you know, it was sitting up at the downtrend line, so it could have gave a good opportunity for puts. You're gonna be doing the same thing, you know, just waiting, seeing a rejection. Um, if you did catch SQ last week, maybe you have a good day trade for a day or two to the downside, but eventually it did break out. So that's the only thing you wanna be careful with. Next, we'll go into Uber. Oh, so this is just like DraftKings, uh, except this is a test number three. Uh, you can see on DraftKings, it was a um, test number four. So you got one, two, three, fourth test, Uber. This would be the third test for the downtrend line. So you can see you got test one, test two, test three. It gives me, honestly, I think it, it could give you a better reading for downside because test three is usually where the trend lines do establish and they'll go ahead and create that trend. This could be looking good for puts. Maybe it might pull up in the supply and break out. We'll have to see. They do have earnings coming up, so 
I personally probably wouldn't swing trade this unless you got 30 to 60 days expiration, just like I, I was saying on Navita. Um, but earnings is risky to trade options on. So, you know, proceed with caution. Honestly, though, this is just like DraftKings. So you're going to be waiting for a cash open rejection or you're going to be looking for it to break out. If it does like consolidate or something, you know, maybe the trade's not, trade's not ready yet. If you wanted, if you wait for Friday's high to get taken out, um, which is... I mean, really close if it decides to open up around the same spot or if you want to take puts you can wait for friday's low to get taken out so that that could be like your confirmation uh level if you wanted to wait but uh, otherwise just like DraftKings, you're waiting for a breakout waiting for a rejection um you're gonna want to see resistance around this 200 if you want to go short and continue upside over this 200 uh if you want to go long see how the market opens um you know anything could happen we don't have any economic data this week that's of really any significant importance uh, we do have you know initial jobless claims maybe a couple of fed speakers but, uh, nothing like the cpi report last week you know nothing like non-farm payrolls or you know stuff that's going to make the market go two three percent next we're going into crm this is a sales force looking strictly at puts on this one because there is this massive supply um you can see on this huge green day led to huge inbounds to the downside just insane sell-off from um, even one candle getting up to a negative 7.35 percent day so huge sell-off um, after this green day so this green day created a massive sell imbalance um, so something happened in this candle to lead to this and that's what our thesis is once it pulls up into supply we'll be looking for resistance hopefully um, you might have to wait you know a couple cents here before it taps but uh, this could make a good day trade maybe even swing trade um, depending on how much time you got me personally probably looking for more of a day trade um we do have a fed meeting coming up in february so the market could be super chill until then for all we know you know with the exception for economic data you know we're still really sensitive to data so we'll have to see um, me personally though i'm looking more at day trades i did get into some spy puts for february um just because that vix is so low it made puts cheap but we want to see you know some follow through on that hopefully um, but I did get time on it so I can let it play out. You know, I'm not rushing it. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, starting to look at February swings because, you know, January OPEX is about to end. So yeah, CRM, looking for a pull up in a supply, looking for resistance about there uh, due to this massive supply zone. So we want to see some rejection or reaction as soon as it gets up to there. AAL. This one is just a massively overbought. Honestly, I'm looking for a technical rebalance to the downside. Uh, you only have a couple days before earnings, so this would be a day trade, obviously. Uh, so this would be Thursday the 26th. So after OPEC, so you could actually, you know, you could trade this this week uh, without worrying about earnings. But you can see, I mean, RSI way overbought up in like the 85s. You got these massive bullish candles. We go down to the one week though, we haven't tapped this trend line yet. So if you wanted to wait for it to get up into the trend line and look for, you know, resistance reaction around there, you could do that. Um, but otherwise, I mean, just look at this. I mean, it's just straight, straight up, right? In my opinion, this could be a really good counter trend reversal play. Looking at day trades on puts for this one. Um, swing trade. Obviously, you're going to have the weekly time frame more in mind because you're doing multi-day holds. So one week time frame is pretty important. Yeah, you can wait for it to pull into that trend line if you wanted to do that. Otherwise, looking at a day trade on this just because of the daily time frame. And you can see why. One thing you do have going against you though, MACD is still positive and you do have earnings coming up and a lot of, I mean, a lot of stocks, they get pre-earnings momentum. So yeah, puts on this, looking at a day trade. So Navita, we're looking at calls on that one week breakout. DK and G, we're waiting for confirmation. They're puts or calls depending if it wants to break out at the line since they're both directly at the line uber doing the same thing we're waiting for puts or calls um we want to see the same thing with dkng you want to see a reaction to the line either confirm selling at cash open or uh, confirm breakout at open crm uh, we're waiting for it to get up into supply we're going to go ahead and take puts on that if it gets up into supply and gives you a good reaction ael technical rebalance to the downside looking at puts because of overbought condition we're going to the spy so what a crazy week last week we focused on this pennant obviously so we had this pennant right and draw this for you just so you can see what we had last week so this is our closing candle last friday so this um this breakout was confirmed and the bulls did have the momentum in their favor and we were looking for bullish momentum uh, last week and we did get that this week um we did pull into let me get rid of this go to the weekly so we did pull into this downtrend line here i could even get rid of all these levels for you just so you have a cleaner look you got your one week downtrend line from all-time highs down to here we did pull into that um we haven't cleared it yet so Ideally, bulls are going to need to break out of this line, kind of like what you saw in the Vida in our first setup, or we're going to want to see rejection and, you know, resistance at the line uh, if you're bearish. So me personally, 
Um, the VIX is getting scary low. I mean, it's under, I mean, it, it's hit the 18 levels now, which is massively, um, it just got wrecked, like, it, which means, I mean, eventually, I think money managers and Wall Street institutions are going to go ahead and start hedging, you know, their gains that they've gotten this week from CPI and the crazy volatility. They're going to start getting puts for cheap to hedge their position. Once they do that, you know, you will see the VIX start moving up um, due to, you know, SPX options being bought or sold. And that does, uh, you know, that does result in the VIX moving. So uh, the VIX is literally just made up of SPX options. That's how it's calculated. So yeah, um, for the SPY this week, obviously you have the 200 EMA in the way. Um, one level of focus we have been focusing on for weeks um, in multiple videos was this 390.14. So we did finally clear that. Once we cleared that, I mean, you can see, I mean, the momentum picked up super heavy. And what that 30, uh, 390.14 came from was this. So this little previous support, uh, you could just see it. Uh, once it broke, it got heavy selling. And once we got back over, momentum picked up. And um, if we do break the downtrend line and the 200 EMA, that does give us free space up to 410 where you got a straight you know sell imbalance up here that's the move this week we want to see it break out of the downtrend or you want to see it reject off the 200 and the downtrend another thing that the bears would need is to get back under the same the same 390 we've been focusing on so you need to get under 390 and it could head back you know down to the 370s oh it also need to get under the 50 ema too so the 50 and 200 obviously are your two most important uh, speaking in terms of daily time frame, one week time frame, your 50 and 200 are probably the most important. Those are your medium, which is your 50, that's your medium term moving average, and then you have your longer term trend line, or um, longer term moving average, which is your 200. So keep the downtrend line in focus, watch the daily 200, that's it. So QQQ, so last week, I didn't think this one looked as favorable, regardless of your of our big tech focus last week on our individual names, which was, you know, Apple, Microsoft, and Google. Regardless, um, QQQ did break this trend line, so uh, I really didn't feel good about it until it got back over the trend line, invalidated your trend, then it could get some bullish momentum. Um, it was finally able to do that, and now it is clearing that, similar to SPY, it's clearing that 278, which is this consolidations range support. So it comes from this bottom and this bottom. And now you can see QQQ is clearing over it. It looks good. This uptrend line breakdown is invalidated. Um, you could even argue it created a double bottom right here. So you got bottom one, bottom two, bottom uh, double bottom resistance, breakout. So that is a confirmed double bottom. I'm mean, even clear if you went down to the four hour, bottom one, bottom two, uh, double bottom resistance, breakout. And that's your confirmed pattern right there. Uh, and especially this previous support, it's really good that it finally got over this. Um, it will need to stay over it. So this consolidation range is pretty important to get back into. If we go to the weekly time frame, just get rid of all this so it's got a cleaner look. This is your downtrend line from all time high to current. You can see test one, test two, we got a test three rejection, now coming back up for a fourth. So uh, it looks like you do have a little bit of room to go up for the NASDAQ um, and hit the trend line, which I mean could play into SPY breaking out of its downtrend line. We'll have to see. Um, it won't be confirmed to break out until we see a one week candle outside of it. And same for SPY. You have to see the one-week candle outside of this, as well as clearing 410. So 410 would seal the deal, and if it cleared 410, obviously that take it up to 431. QQQ, um, if it can clear this, then clear 296. That does give it room up to 334. And you also have to keep in mind your uh, one-week moving averages. So you have your 200; it's still under here, and then you have your 50 right here, which is your you know more medium term. But really I don't see a specific setup again. Uh, maybe a little bit of room up to the downtrend line, but that's about it. Just sticking to day trades for this, no swing setups. I like SPY better personally for a swing trade. Uh, you have your downtrend line. We want to see confirmed selling at the downtrend line, and they'll give you good confirmation for puts, as well as your low VIX, uh, giving you cheap premium. Next, we'll go into the IWM. IWM, I said last week, you had a similar setup to SPY. You had your, you know, you had your little um, pennant. Uh, we could even go down to the four hour, probably give you a cleaner pennant. So this is your pennant, it was something like that. So that was your pennant, right? Um, it did break out. What I did say is that I had room up to the 200 AMA, it hit that and now it's cleared it. So looking pretty bullish, um, despite it going up into supply here. So maximum for IWM, I can put you a supply here. Um, it would need to get over supply, make a base to go higher. Um, but otherwise, it's as far as I can put you. Looking a little overbought short term. But uh, otherwise, I mean, great run last week. You can maybe look at puts once it gets up into supply. 
to 190. Um, it would absolutely have to clear 190 to get more bullish momentum. Yeah, I mean, really nice setup uh, for last week. Um, just wait for it to get up in the supply, see how it reacts, and then maybe you go look at puts or something. Uh, if you do get the confirmed rejection, you can see this is a pretty strong rejection area. So um, we'll have to see. You have a rejection here, get a rejection here, rejection here. So we'll have to see if maybe the liquidity dried up at this area or if it will uh, stay resilient and sellers will come out on top here. VIX. <clears throat> so this thing just got slammed last week. Um, we were watching this trend line and overall pennant. It did break that. And you can see once it broke that, I mean, just insane downside. Um, so this week I got us going down to 1634 max if it did want to continue to sell off which would be really bullish for stocks by the way so I mean that, that could just totally take a crap on bears but it does come down to this level and you can see this free range space that it could um, know that it could fill up so it did clear the 1845 which is this and then the 1895 which is our level of focus and that was coming from this area and you can zoom in this is the 1895 and then the 1845 you see here was from you know further to the left so yeah vix maximum i can put you down at 1634 i think that's kind of a stretch considering the vix shouldn't be selling off this much you know in a couple days but um i mean cpi report inflation came down people are getting optimistic uh, i personally don't think the fed's gonna pivot or anything i think they're just gonna slow the pace like they said keep rates higher for longer and that will put contraction on corporate earnings it will put a contraction on our economy our labor market etc so got to be careful with that uh, for the data if we go to the 2022 average close uh, last week it did come down about 10 cents so it came down from 2560s down to 2552 um, and you can see we're just vix is under all moving averages so you got the 50 here you got your 2022 to 2023 average close just 2550s eventually this is going to have a mean regression so the vix is going to come back up test the average and you know maybe find resistance about there or the moving averages so you got your 50 and your 200 here as well yeah i mean this thing just got slammed so not looking great for the bears but uh puts are cheap so there's that <laughs> i mean it, it it could be good i mean premiums haven't been this cheap in a good little minute here um, except for when it tested the 1895 in December, you have another uh, 19s in August, another 19s in April. You have your lower 16s here in January of 22. So yeah, I mean, premium hasn't been this cheap 30 days out in a good little minute. So that's worth noting. And you do have to keep in mind, money managers are going to see this. Uh, you know, Wall Street, they're, they're going to want to go ahead and take advantage of the premium, get cheap puts to hedge their gate. So keep that in mind. DXY, so this is the dollar index. It did clear down our 2022 peak we were focused on last week, which is great for stocks, just like I said. Uh, we're going to want to stay under it. Um, maximum, I can put us down at the 101.29, which comes from this little base right here. You can see that. We could even zoom in. So that's your 10, 101.20. So maximum, I can put us there until I see how it reacts. If the dollar does want to come down a little bit, um, if the dollar does want to reclaim and you know make a you know a monthly base. So if it wanted to make this monthly base off the COVID peak, that would not be good for bulls. Uh, if you're you know bullish on stocks, so this is the 2020 COVID peak. If this monthly candle closed above, uh, it would not be good personally. I think that would be giving you a very good case for making a base off of it and coming back up higher. So that will depend on the Federal Reserve. Uh, it depends on the meeting, which is the next event everybody is waiting for. So we'll have to see. Um, but otherwise, you do wanna see this 101.29 hold if you're bearish on stocks. If it does lose the 101.29, that's not good for you. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be good for bears, you know, bad for bulls if you're bullish on stocks, obviously. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. I hope the audio, uh, audio quality sounds good and um, I'll continue making the best content I can create. I uh, hope the setups are just as good last week and I hope everybody makes money. Make sure you like, comment, and, sub and subscribe to our X Trades YouTube channel. I love you guys and make sure to tune in to the next one.